Good morning, church. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Chloe, and I have the privilege of leading the youth ministry team at ICB. I was reading this morning in Romans 8, and it was just packed with encouragement. So I wanted to share um, verses 31 to 39 with you in the New Living Translation. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honour at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. I love how God's word doesn't shy away from the harder parts of this life. I don't know what you're facing today, but God does. I pray that his word breathes hope into your soul. It says we may face trouble or calamity. We may be hungry or persecuted, destitute, in danger, or even threatened with death. But we know and can be convinced that these things are not a signal that God has abandoned us or that God no longer loves us. How do we know this? The evidence comes just before in verse number 32. God did not spare his own son for us. He freely gave him up for all of us that we could be restored. We who sin and fail and fall could be brought back into right standing with God. So let me close with this and then we'll pray. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, nor in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's pray. Loving and eternal God, we thank you today for your word. It is the rock we can stand on when this world is confusing and chaotic and even scary. Though we may tremble, you are our peace. I thank you for technology, which allows us to connect together and stand united in prayer to you for our city and for our world. We pray this morning that you would touch and heal all who find themselves sick. Give supernatural energy, we pray, to the caregivers and those who are working hard to find a cure. Please give wisdom to the leaders and decision makers. We ask that this situation would be used for your glory. Teach us what you want us to learn. Help us to rest in you and hear your voice. We pray that you would send your spirit to our loved ones who don't know you yet, that they might open their hearts to your love. We praise you because you are in control and you know what you are doing. We pray in faith for your will to be done and your kingdom to come here as it is in heaven. May we remember how we are sustained by, steeped in, and washed 
by the unfailing love of Christ. And may that love compel us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And it is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen and may God bless your day.